Here behind me is the new 8-pack Meteoroid. It's the latest and greatest in 8-pack um, Mini ITX designs. Um, it's quite possibly the most customizable machine that we've created yet. We're really proud of it. The history of the system essentially is that the Meteoroid uh, and the Asteroid, in fact, uh, are both ITX systems traditionally within the 8-pack range. Uh, and historically, the Meteoroid is the AMD ITX system. So it's a brand new case design. Um, it takes some influences from uh, the Comet system that we had previously. New crazy aesthetic, new water cooling and, and new features and obviously updated hardware. And here we have it on the table uh, next to me. The Meteoroid uh, Mark II is literally DNA from the, the Meteoroid. It's always been a, a, an acrylic case in the main with uh, different coloured accent panels, if you like. One of the really unique things about this system um, is the amount of different materials that we can actually produce this out of. The one behind me is all acrylic, um, but we do have different options, well, a plethora of different options. You can even go for like an aluminium case, should they wish. Of course, that will be a more premium cost. Similar, they can have a pure carbon case, for example, which again would be uh, uh, an extra cost of around a thousand pounds, I think, if you want entirely carbon and no plastic in there. We could do um, a carbon fibre front panel, and then an acrylic colour accent panel. But we could also do that in a combination with aluminium as well. So we can also provide Cerakoting on the aluminium panels. So, I mean, there's pretty much any colour that you want on, on the Cerakote list. When we're, we're the designers and the manufacturers of the case, we can also control the complete customization of that case. Um, so you can basically have a combination of aluminium, acry acrylic or carbon fibre and acrylic or carbon fibre and aluminium, all different possibilities. Or you can just have full carbon if you really like carbon fibre. Be my choice. We've designed the case uh, from, from the base up uh, to be very individual to us. Uh, hence we've added the hexagonal uh, airflow, if you like, which uh, gives better airflow than just the normal vents, but also gives it a personal touch. As you can imagine, we always want to make sure we can eke out all the performance that we possibly can. So the cooling's got to really match that. We don't want to have to, you know, undervolt and things like that, which is generally something that you would expect from a, an ITX DTX system so that you can fit it into a really compact space. So really we've designed it ourselves so that we can accommodate everything in it ourselves that we want. And here we've got the acrylic case. We've redesigned all the uh, airflow. So you've got good airflow from front to back. And obviously we've added even more cooling previously. It was very slim radiators in the base. Now it's uh, XE radiators, which uh, give it like twice the cooling capacity of the previous meter. So a bit more information about the cooling uh, and what we've used inside the machine. Um, we have a magnitude CPU block from EK, and we also have a vector um, graphics card water block. A lot of people in these smaller builds are using like DDC pumps. Whereas obviously the D5 pump is more reliable and you get better flow rate. So we, we've got here a D5 pump, uh, which we've uh, accommodated here at the front of the case. A reservoir, which is actually built into the motherboard tray uh, and, and has a really good thickness of a settle so we can allow for a decent fluid buffer. Everyone else is using like uh, Perspex where you're using a settle here because it's a more stable material and you get also the black uh, look here uh, which is much cleaner than the uh, Perspex pass-through plates. We have two 360 radiators in the bottom. Um, now we've opted to go with the thicker radiator rather than the thinner, just so that we've got you know really nice cooling capacity. You know the thicker radiators for better cooling because ultimately it's the contact on the CPU, the contact on the GPU, the flow rate, and the radiator thickness uh, and size which is affecting the cooling. We've got six Noctua fans, high static pressure that are in the bottom, which basically exhaust out the bottom of the machine, and they've got the intake in the front, which is provided by some EK. Um, RGB Vardar fans. And then all the cooling itself is all configured and controlled by the Aquero. Obviously we set a profile up there which is going to be the best compromise between quietness and performance. You can obviously adjust that but we want to make sure that it's going to cover all bases. But this is, you know, it's quite an intuitive piece of software. It will allow you to configure different inputs, um, different temperature ranges and then control complete fan curve and, and pump curve and things according to that. It's by far one of the best sort of fan controllers on the market. So we've got the maximum cooling on the radiators, we've got the maximum flow rate from the pump, and then we've got 
the best uh, CPU block and GPU block. Uh, and we've concentrated obviously on making sure that the contact is good. In terms of uh, hardware in the unit, uh, we've got, uh, as I've already mentioned, it's based on AMD. So we've got a, a Ryzen uh, 9 5950X, or of course the customer can choose a 5900X should they want slightly higher boost clocks uh, on a lower core count CPU. It's up to the customer what they're using it for. I mean, for gaming, 5900X will be fine, but if you want gaming plus content creation, 5950X makes complete sense. As you can imagine, we always want to make sure we can eke out all the performance that we possibly can. We're tuning the CPU to take advantage of the cooling with uh, performance boost two overclocking. So in your gaming, you're talking like up to five gigahertz on low core count, maybe even 5.1, maybe even 5.2, depending on how low a core count the game is using. And then on your content creation, it's stable at around 4.7 if you're rendering uh, long term, which over 16 cores is great. Uh, the motherboard in the system is a uh, ROG Impact. Impact has traditionally been a great overclocking motherboard in ITX. And we've got that in inverted orientation. We basically do that so that we can get the graphics card as close to the top of the case as we can. So we've got just on the top a little window so that we, you can see all the nice fluid passing through the, the plexi water block. Um, obviously with vert mounts and things like that, that's sort of changed the orientations of the cards. But, you know, hark back about five years ago, literally you'd have a water-cooled card and you couldn't see the best bit of it. Um, so this is really why we've done it that way around, we can bask in its glory. Often there's not good enough ITEX motherboards to take advantage of these high core count CPUs and allow for really good stable solid overclocking, but this is a full-blown ROG motherboard with great power delivery and all the facilities that you even have on like a Formula or an Extreme or a Hero, but in such a small form factor, so it's the perfect board of choice for this system. Uh, memory wise, the customer can choose like 32 gig or 64 gig in a variety of speeds and obviously a variety of uh, different finishes, plain black or RGB. Uh, obviously, whatever the customer chooses, we can tune the timings, we can tune the infinity fabric speed and the divider to get the best performance possible. In terms of storage, again, that's up to the customer. Obviously, we're using WD black Gen 4 drives but do they want uh, only one terabyte? Do they want 24 terabytes, including an SSD? I mean, that's no problem also, so the customer can choose. And then uh, GPU-wise, uh, we've got here uh, a 3080 Ti, which again comes uh, obviously pre-overclocked by the customer, but we're also overclocking that further to take advantage of the water cooling uh, and how far the GPU can be pushed when you manually overclock. So you can probably gain an extra 5%, maybe even 10% on the GPU performance also by manual overclocking. So in terms of customization, the customer can literally have whatever they want. So first off is the distro plates themselves. We can do those um, now in either basically an acetal POM material, um, which is available in white or black. Um, it's an engineering grade plastic, so you know it's, it's really nice and durable. Um, actually more durable than the acrylic. Obviously, we do the acrylic versions as well, and we can do different colors and different variations. Matte black tubing, again, that's all configurable. Um, you can have clear if you would prefer clear or frosted, um, or stainless or copper, um, nickel, you name it, we can pretty much do it. Um, the fittings on there are the um, EK Torx. I'm personally quite in love with the, uh, the satin titanium finish, which these ones are. They also have the accent rings, so these are these are black to match the rest of the ins inside of the machines. But again, we can tailor those to the aesthetic depending on what what you want, really. We've got like a teal colour as well on the fluid, which obviously you can see in the pass-through plate here, in the pump here, uh, and in the reservoir at the back. Fluid in this machine is actually a custom mix, so we've used EK solid um, fluids for that, but we've actually mixed blue and green to match the the, the accent panels. We can also um, cater to that as much as we can. Obviously, we're limited with the colour palettes that are available. And then we've got the teal, grey and black cables, but the customer can literally choose any colour cables. MDPCX sleeving um, on there. Again, they have quite a, a fixed colour palette. They're obviously, they always, um, they're continually expanding that. The variation of which colours you want that are within that catalogue, if you like, yeah, we can, we can cater for anything on that side of things. Um, so lighting configurations inside the machine, and um, we do have a couple of different options available. 
Um, the options that we've got here is a basic RGB setup, so all of the components on the front fans are RGB. And then we have some dark side um, white LED strips that are in the top. Those are actually dimmable, so as you can see it's very bright and you can understand that if it's on your desk it might be a bit glaring. So we've programmed that into the, um, the Aquero so that you can actually dim those LEDs down. You can set the RGB on the system how they wish or of course have it blank if they wish. I mean they don't need to have RGB memory even, they can choose blank memory. Uh, all that kind of stuff is completely customised well by the customer. With regards to the rest of the lighting, obviously you don't have to have the dark side strips in the top, you can just have regular RGB if you want to. And then also a note with the, the distro plate, obviously with it being a black acetyl material, putting an RGB strip in there would be utterly pointless. So when there is an acrylic version inside the machine, it has an LED channel so that it carries the, 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 the RGB color across that as well. You know, where it comes to the, the, the branding of the machine, we can do custom variations of that as well. Um, you know, if you wanted a particular design for the way that the channels root and things like that, is that we can, you know, we can customize those to that level of detail. We can remove the eight pack branding altogether. Um, obviously, we would rather that we keep that branding there. Um, but yeah, it can be discussed depending on what your requirements are. So in terms of uh, further customizations as well, uh, here at Overclocks we've now got, um, we've got a UV printer. So if you look at the example um, behind me, um, you can see that we've now got a design printed on the actual outside of the case. So we can basically take a vectorized image format, put that onto pretty much any material, print that on, it cures it to the surface, it's really durable um, and, well, looks pretty fantastic. So the customer also can have like etched side panel, etched uh, graphics panel, uh, etching literally anywhere. They can even have an embossed logo where the 8 is there on the front. Or they can have some cool printing on, uh, say, the graphics card block itself. They can have it on the graphics card uh, backplate if they wish, or even the entire case. What we actually did with this process is we created a a mask in Illustrator and then took a picture of the acrylic and then colour matched it to the picture that we'd taken and then printed it on the panels. We can pretty much print anything as long as it's in a vector format, um, basically a PDF. The only real restriction is that obviously we can't print any copyrighted material, it has to be an original file. Should you, you know, have any failure, touch wood, that that wouldn't happen. It is covered by a three year um, return to base warranty. Um, we do send a specialist courier essentially to come and collect this machine from you and bring it straight back to us. Um, they get priority as far as, you know, returns, turnaround and repairs and all that sort of stuff. And we do supply them with a flight case. Um, so, you know, perfect for going to show off at lands and things like that. But it also means that if you do need to transport it back to us or anything like that, it's protected. Thanks for watching my video about the Meteoid Mark II, now available at all our partners and obviously on Overclockers on the website. Check out the link below. Don't like the video, don't subscribe, but do make a comment, especially about the size of my arms. Thanks for watching.